I don't know if anyone else noticed on that last play where the puck went out, everyone on the Kingston bench flinched and turned their heads, put their arms up, except Curtis Foster. Just kept chewing his gum, didn't even blink. Great job, D. Like the mental side, I know with hockey is such a, a massive thing. It's, it, it, it's to me, it's the biggest thing. I mean, you need to be able to play with, with, a, with an open mind and play with, without worrying about other things, because when you're in that moment and you need to make that play, you can't be thinking about other things. And, you know, so you really have to do what we have to do what we can to kind of put that aside when we're on the ice. And that's, you know, by us paying attention and noticing what our, what our players need is really helping out with that, so. Get above! Good play. Well, I think that as I got older, I started to realize that like, I, I really thought the game well, but my feet couldn't quite do exactly what I want anymore because Ski. the game was getting that much faster. And it's one of the reasons why I got into coaching is that I always felt that I could think the game well. And, um, you know, I always said to my wife, I, I, I think the game better than I can play it. And she used to give me a hard time because I played 15 years. But, you know, I think just kind of that mindset is, you know, is, is one of the reasons why I'm here today as a coach and, and not playing anymore. Curtis Foster in my first year doing the games, he was an overager with the Peterborough Peets, drafted in the second round by Calgary. But he was still playing overage here. And then Calgary made a deal, I'd say about November, December in the season, and he was just part of it. Three! It kind of was the last couple years. Um, you know, I started to realize that uh, I enjoyed the, uh, you know, the, the coaching side of the game and, you know, you know trying to trying to see what adjustments we're making in game and you know dealing with players and working with young guys and that sort of thing so I started to feel that uh, maybe it was in my future and um, you know last summer I kind of made the decision that I was ready to retire and or sorry two summers ago and um, you know I put my name out there and was lucky enough to get on with Peter Peets, which was the uh, city that my wife and I called home so it was a great first year and great opportunity. The return of Curtis Foster, now an assistant coach with the Kingston Frontenacs. That seems very odd because Curtis Foster kind of bleeds maroon and white. At least he did up until this offseason. Curtis spent last year as the eye in the sky, as you know, Scott. He played uh, four great years here as a member of the Peterborough nice. Beats. Fast, go. Great play, Mur. It was great. I mean, being a guy that uh, played four and a half years with the Peets in junior, you know, it was kind of pretty close to my heart and a lot of the same people were still there so uh, made the adjustment of into coaching a lot easier and uh, also saying that you know it was the the city where my my wife and I and our my family had called home during the off season my whole career so being able to stay in our home which was made it a lot a lot nicer and uh, our kids were able to be around uh, you know their friends and our family and all that fun stuff so for a first year back it was kind of a perfect opportunity but you know I got antsy after the first year of you know, wanted to get on the bench, get more in the action. Timing-wise, it just didn't work out. He wanted to step up and be on the bench. Jake Grimes was still in the picture at that point. He took the job in Kingston, and that's where he's 100% focused here now. Hey, you're good there, but right there, if you give it to him, if you don't want that because you know the guy's coming, just yell. No, 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 no. You know what I mean? Like, like cause he gave it to you. Peter Peterborough asked what my intentions were for the following season. I asked that I'd like to be on the bench. You know, I wanted to get, you know, my foot in the door. And, become a real coach and you know and get that uh, in-game aspect as part of my you know repertoire and um, you know being upstairs was great but you know being on a bench myself for 15 years you kind of want to get back on and get right in the action and um, when I asked Peter Rowe at the time they said there wasn't any room and uh, so then I put my name out there and talked to a few teams but then when the opportunity with Kingston came came about it was uh, kind of a perfect scenario I knew Paul McFarland quite a bit just from getting to know him the summer before. I've known Darren since his Peterborough days and Jeff McKercher was the head scout and we played together in junior and Adam Dewan was the scout and we played together in junior so there's a little bit of comfort level um, amongst the guys here that made a, you know an easier decision for me to make the move. Um, you know I can't say anything but great things. He's a guy that uh, he knows the game so well you know I've learned so much from him. You know when, when you're a guy that plays 15 years you think you know the whole game so well but you know, when you get into coaching, it's a whole new aspect. And having a guy that has the experience he has of being an assistant coach with some great people in the Western League and being a head coach for six years, you know, you know, I learn new new things every day. And you know, the preparation we do is, you know, is at another level. And um, you know, it's been a lot of fun so far working with him and working with Phil Mangan. Just a good staff, and you know, I think we work well off each other. And it, you know, it's been great so far. When he's in trouble, there, J. Rob's in trouble. Maybe if you go behind him, he can go off the wall. You know. But you got to tell him. You know what I mean? It just might be open there. I know, I know, I know. I know. 
up, go, and we back, came in, go, we kind of, you know, rats. you know, kind of hit, hit the ground running and kind of learned from each other and, you know, picked up little things that each other wanted to do and stuff that we weren't doing that we wanted to work on. And I think it's been, it's been great. I mean, I think every day we're learning new things and we're, you know, we're getting closer and closer. And, you know, there's always, as a coach, you're always going to have your arguments. And as I always say, they're always healthy arguments over different things. And I think that's what makes a, a staff great is being able to argue, think about it, and then make decisions. And I think so far it's been going, going very well. Hey, what happened there? You like stutter step, man. I crossed over the middle. Okay. Sometimes, like, you know what I mean? Like, on a guy like that, sometimes you literally, if he's got too much speed, you turn and skate forward if you're on that. You know what I mean? If you don't have the gap because he's so fast, you know what I mean? Like, you're not, like, yeah. who cares? You just don't want that, right? Yeah. So if you have to turn and skate, that's okay. Murr and Brad's here. Don't worry about it, though, eh? Don't worry about it. There's a reason he's got 37 points. How much coaching is changing is, you know, the old school just yelling, yelling, yelling doesn't quite work with everybody anymore. And, you know, you got to really get to know your players on a personal level because some guys are going to learn different ways. Some guys could be uh, audio, some could be visual, some guys could need to be actually moved and shown how to do things. Like, so you got to really get to know your players and know what, what comes across to them because, I mean, Everybody's different and everybody, you know, does it their own way. And if you can find a way to know your players as much as you can and the best, that's what I think leads to good results. That's Curtis Foster, the former player in the OHL. Played with Peterborough and then played in the NHL. I think the biggest thing for me is that, you know, having that playing career kind of gets you in the door right away and it kind of earns that trust. And you have to continue to build it and, and work to to grow it over time, but I think right away it gives me that instant trust factor that you know when I when I make a comment or I try to teach, they seem to listen, and I think that really helps. You know, at least at the beginning, and then over time you have to show them that you care and that you know what you're talking about and, and that you're making them better. And I think when you do that, it, the, the trust just builds and builds. Did you guys see that, D? Hey, D, did you see that? Even just a hard hard play on the boards is good there, eh? My last year in, in Germany, I was um, I was actually scratched for a little bit in playoffs, which was never easy to take, but I kind of took a young guy under my wing and we did a lot of work. And um, just kind of bringing that attitude to coaching has gone a long way. And, and you know, not just working, you know, here everybody's a young guy, so you kind of grab whoever you can. But, um, you know, having that kind of big brother attitude is a good way to be, especially as an assistant coach. Because, like I said, you got to gain their trust. And if you're a guy that they trust, and you they also have a good time around you. And, you know, you have a few laughs while you're working. That's when uh, that's when you really can build, a, you know, a big trust amongst each other.